Hi, I'm Elizabeth and this is another pantry chore. I did one about three weeks ago of our downstairs deep pantry for our large family. Uh, we're a family of 11, we have nine children and we're currently uh, stationed in Canada, we're, but we're US military. So a lot of the products that you see here um, are going to be from the United States. They'll have American labeling, uh, but some, some are Canadian. Um, I don't consider myself to be a prepper I don't have any of that like, um, you know, that 30 year type food on hand, um, but we do have a lot of food and I, I decided to do this video after a lot of people said that this looks like a prepper pantry and that would be something interesting to post. I'm down here in my basement. This is um, where we have our storage for our deep pantry. Uh, we also have some exercise equipment and, you know, pool table and stuff like that down here. So we're going to get started. This cart is normally in the pantry itself, uh, but I've already rolled it out. It was kind of noisy in the other video. So coming around, sorry about that. Um, so this cart is normally in the pantry, but it has a lot of um, like breakable stuff, some glass things on it. On top, these are my canning lids. Um, I do most of my canning with regular mouth um, regular mouth jars, and these are Canadian canning lids. Um, they're the Bernardin brand and the regular, regular lids. These are the wide lids. I do have some wide containers, um, some wide jars that I use. Um, the Vaseline that you see here, this is pectin for canning, uh, canning jam. The Vaseline that you see here, my, my pressure canner is an all American canner and it does not have a gasket, but you do put some Vaseline on the seal and that helps it to have a good seal. Down here we have some sweeteners um, when we were trying to do uh, like a low carb diet and we, we just still have them down here. There's monk fruit and, and swerve, which I think is erythritol. Um, butter chicken sauce. Uh, this is a sauce that's very popular here in Canada and we've uh, we've just uh, gotten into to eating that. We usually bake up the chicken or cook it in a pan and then put the sauce over it. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be eaten, but that's the way we eat it. Um, tamari sauce, which is a, a soy sauce um, that's made with soy itself rather than rather than wheat, like regular soy sauce. Some A1 sauce, there's some barbecue sauce back there as well. Um, down here, there's a whey powder, which is put into smoothies. Uh, I have four pints of vanilla extract when I was organizing the pantry. Uh, for this video, after I did my last video, I discovered two more bottles of vanilla extract, so I'm not going to need any of that for a really long time. Um, there's hot sauce and teriyaki sauce, um, some green olives and some, I think that's like a cookie frosting back there that's all pre-made. I'm going to come around here, come around my light, and just give you kind of an overview of this pantry. So upstairs, we have our regular day-to-day -day pantry. That's better. We have our regular day-to-day -day pantry. Um, and then we have our uh, buckets. And we have several five-gallon buckets. They hold things like flour. Um, I think we have barley in one of them. I have wheat for a couple different kinds of wheat. I have rye and... Um, and a, a red uh, hard, uh, hard winter wheat that I, I use in my, um, my hand crank um, grain mill. I'm gonna try and not block the light here if I can. Uh, I'll start over here like I did the other way um, or in the other video and kind of go, I guess we'll go like top to bottom here. So these jars way up here, those are the only things, or those cans rather than jars, those are the only things that I have that I would consider an actual like prepper food. Um, they're, they're shelf stable for, I think many years. Um, not the Nido, like if you see the, um, the Nido there, that's a whole milk powder. And the eggs, um, the eggs and the strawberries can stay on the shelf for a long time. I have the eggs just as a backup to regular eggs. So if I, you know, we live in a rural area and I can go and get, um, 
you know, go and get these eggs out of the pantry here in case I, I run out and I'm in the middle of baking because to get to the store, you're talking about at least an hour round trip drive. And if the weather's bad, if it's been snowing, then uh, we won't be able to make that drive anyway. Uh, there's a whole bunch of pineapple chunks and they go way back. This I found is another can of powdered Gatorade. I, I thought I only had one, but it turns out I have two of them. Uh, there's some like meal replacement drinks there as well as there. Um, again, another thing I didn't know that I had. Uh, this is our mayonnaise. These are like little four ounce mayonnaise packets. We don't use a lot of mayonnaise, especially for 11 people. So that's a good way for us to buy it. Um, it also works really well when you're traveling and uh, you can just bring a little bit and make up sandwiches and you're not using up a whole jar or having to find those little packets. Um, some small cans of sliced carrots. Uh, I don't normally serve canned vegetables. No one really cares for them that much, but we have them on hand just in case. Um, and we also have um, our youngest child has Down syndrome and she needs sliced up uh, soft foods and those work really well for her. We also have a bunch of um, like canned peas and things that I can just open in the middle of the day without having to cook a whole nother meal for her. Moving over here, I moved some things around compared to the other video. These are like some foil pans. I don't normally use those, but we have them on hand like when we're getting ready to move or uh, that sort of situation so we can cook without having a, a big mess to clean up. Um, these are salt shakers. I actually, I couldn't get salt back last spring and I, I ordered these. This was the only kind of salt I could get at the time. Um, it's a pack of 24 um, salt shakers and that is iodized salt. Um, our regular salt, which is real salt, is not iodized. Uh, these are those canned blueberries, um, just canned blueberries and juice, kind of an unusual canned item, um, but they're, they're great if you run out of the frozen ones. Um, we got pretzels and then diapers I've pulled. I've already pulled down a case of diapers from here. Um, since the last video. I did uncover a bunch of Ziploc bags, which was great because I thought I was low on them. Um, and and these, uh, these uh, crackers are from our other storage area. Um, we're not Jewish actually, but these are fantastic crackers. They're really large uh, matzo crackers. And they're, they're a great food to have on hand. They last a long time. Put some butter and some salt on those and they are just delicious um very hearty cracker you know they're they're big you can you know with some like canned tuna canned chicken you can make a meal out of these um good road trip food too because they don't break easily you don't end up with like a bunch of crushed up crackers uh there's some egg noodles this is a case of albacore tuna packets all of this is, I was saying in the other video that, that we have more pie filling than I thought we did. And once I went through everything, we have way more pie filling than I thought we did. I think we have about 40 cans total of all different pie filling. Uh, we have some over here. Like these are, there's raspberry and strawberry. Um, there's apple strawberry, mixed berry. There's more apple behind there. And then that's a whole nother case of the mixed berry one. Um, moving down here, this is some coffee. And this is the canned bread I was talking about. We actually got one out and ate one um, just to try it out. And and it's a, it's a unique food. Um, these are a whole bunch of, you know, parchment paper and, and plastic wrap and, and bags and things. This is, this middle shelf is a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Um, a little bit of almond milk. Um, this is just one can, or actually two cans here. Um, this is the ground meat. This is one of the only other like prepper type foods that I keep on hand. Um, I have a lot of this ground, um, ground beef and then some of their beef chunks and their turkey chunks. And some of it is in these 14 ounce cans and some of them are the big cans. I think the big ones are double the size. They're about 28 ounces. But I found, I, I normally, even though there's 11 of us, I buy the smaller cans because with, with this stuff, when you get the bigger cans, a lot of it is, it's fat and it's liquid and it's, 
I think that the smaller ones are a better value, even though they're a little more per pound, the quality is better than the large cans. So, so that's what I get. Um, these are honey mustard sauce, some syrup, and you know, spray oil. Uh, I think this is a big bottle of like imitation vanilla that when, um, like if I'm making a bunch of cookies in bulk, like a, like a kid's bake sale type thing or a kid's party, I'll use the artificial because the cost of vanilla extract has gotten, gotten so high. The coconut chips, I was talking about that, we mix them um, with honey, just mix the, stir them up with honey and then bake them, kind of toast them in the oven uh, about 350 degrees and you just stir them every couple minutes till they look golden brown and you have have these nice uh, chips to eat. Uh, we have a bunch of raisins. Um, this is, I guess it's kind of a prepper food. This is a canned cream and it you can use it for um, making whipped cream if you don't have any, any heavy cream on hand. Um, all of these cases, these are two full Costco cases of evaporated milk. I use a lot of evaporated milk because with so many of us, um, I can't keep enough milk in stock. We go through about a gallon a day or here in Canada, it's a four liter jug. And I don't have the, even with two refrigerators, I don't have the refrigerator space to keep a whole lot of it on hand more than about a week's worth. So I keep um, I keep that evaporated milk and I'll use it to stretch stretch the the gallon of milk um, or in baking. Uh, we have another um, like hundred count thing of coffee there, cauliflower rice. This is the um, like the shredded coconut. We're still not not into that case. I'll move these out of the way. I have a whole bunch of canning jars down here. Um, we her garden. This is a rental house and and. We did a lot of work on the garden, but we didn't get as much as I thought. And with so many of us, we just kind of ate it all. Um, I didn't have very much to to can. So these canning jars are being used for storage. And the reason I put stuff in canning jars is so that not only is it airtight, but it's also um, pretty much in, you know, impenetrable to stuff like, um, bugs and, and mice and things. Uh, we've got rice and sugar. This is pearled barley, um, cornmeal, cocoa powder, wheat germ. That looks like some rice. That's macaroni. Uh, you can fit a lot in a jar. If you think, if you think about a five gallon bucket and they do have charts available online that have how much will fit in a five gallon bucket, how many pounds of a particular food. And if you think four jars equals a gallon, so 20 jars equals a five gallon bucket, you can figure out how many jars you'll need to uh, hold any particular food. This is all rice. We had a 25 pound um, bag of rice. And at the time I didn't have a bucket available for it because I had just gotten, um, you know, I had just gotten some more flour. I think I had gotten some rye at that time. Uh, this is a big pack of Canadian macaroni and cheese. It's called Kraft. Sorry. It's called Kraft Dinner up here. And these are the large boxes of it because you can imagine we make a bunch at a time. Um, this is even more of that pie filling. I don't know how I wound up with so much of this pie filling. Uh, there's raspberry and, and mixed berry. I think... Um, some of this um, we might bring uh, to the food bank because it's it's just way more of it than we're going to go through. These are all the tomatoes. Um, oh, there's a can of like Chef Boyardee <laughs> stuck in there. But this is four, four cases of tomatoes. There's sauce. There's crushed ones down there. Um, this is one of the, the cases you can see down here. This is Keystone beef. And these are beef chunks rather than... I'm sorry about that. That's beef chunks rather than the ground beef. Um, we have pumpkin. There's three cases of pumpkin here that are, you know, almost full. And the pumpkin, pumpkin is very versatile. You can, you can bake with it. You can put it in smoothies. You can uh, mix it with oatmeal, like crock pot oats, and make yourself uh, like a pumpkin spice type crock pot oat thing for very little money. Like I can feed all of 11 of us crock pot pumpkin spice oats for maybe $3 for a full breakfast for all of us. 
Uh, down here is some canned pasta sauce. Um, not my favorite, but that's what I could get. Um, this is another case of that, that canned bread. This is ketchup. Oh, as I uh, showed in the other video, these are the, the bright red, like red plastic restaurant bottles. Um, they work out to about a dollar a bottle if you buy them by the case like this, which is a really good price for ketchup. Let's see, these are 20 ounces a piece. Um, this is some soup that was bought here in Canada. There's four cases um, left of chicken noodle, and then there's two cases of um, of tomato soup back there, in addition to a couple more cases on the one behind me, on the shelf behind me. Um, we go through a lot of soup. That's a really popular thing for the kids, and since uh, there's COVID and remote learning right now, uh, the kids are all home for lunch. Uh, this is a number 10 can. We ate the other number 10 can that was sitting here. Um, but these are, these are a good value. I don't normally buy them, but they were like $5 a piece. So I got some of the mandarin orange ones way in the back here. There's two, sorry, I am blocking the light. There are two big bags. Like these are huge Costco bags of, uh, pancake and waffle mix. Um, there's, there's baking powder. I'm sorry, baking soda and some citric acid. The citric acid is for canning. And then there's crackers. There's also a big box. I think it's um, three cases of that canned ground beef. Uh, these cans, this is also the canned meat. These are turkey, these are both turkey chunks and these are those small cans of turkey chunks. Um, this is pineapple and then three cases. Three cases of mandarin oranges, three cases of pineapple. The two boxes that I moved out of the way from over there were were two more of these and each one has eight uh, like plastic jars of canned pineapple. Uh, we've used some of the pizza sauce since the last video. Um, these are just cans of pre-made pizza sauce that are, that are handy to have on hand. Behind the canned meat, way back there, let me pull this out. These are kind of heavy. There's a big, big stack. You can see it there of small cans of peas. And like I was telling you, for, for our kids, I can open one of them and, and they can eat that at lunchtime uh, without having to, to make a whole thing. Usually, you know, if you have really little kids, they don't mind um, if it's not heated up. They don't mind if the texture is a little different. Um, so you can, you can get away with stuff like that. Um, these are whole potatoes. We haven't gotten into these yet. Um, I hadn't eaten or, you know, I hadn't made canned potatoes until we, we got to where we couldn't actually get canned potato or fresh potatoes. So we started getting canned ones back there. That's even more of the canned peas. I got a good deal on cases of them. I want to say they were, they were seven or $8 for a case of 12. So I got a whole bunch. And then there's a case of canned corn uh, that's from here in Canada. Moving around here, this, I realized I had way, way more of this than I thought I did. These are all diced canned potatoes. I've been trying to use them up and haven't been doing a very good job. I think this is something else that when we move, we'll probably bring whatever's left to the food bank. Um, we do move frequently, um, being a military family. And when we move, we spend months and months eating down our pantry. And then uh, once we move, we, we build it back up again. Um, usually not quite to this level with COVID. Um, we, we have more on hand than we normally do. Um, this is a whole lot of applesauce. Um, the thing with the applesauce was I ordered a case of eight jars and they accidentally sent me eight cases of eight jars. So we have an enormous amount of applesauce right now. I'm not sure we'll, we'll get through that. Uh, we, we got into the other, the other big jug of popcorn. Uh, we use this in an air popper and we go through one of these jugs about every six weeks. Um, I think they're eight pounds or so. This is some extra basmati rice from a large bag. Moving around, we have three gallons of peanut oil. Peanut oil is kind of a basic oil that I use for all different things like 
baking a cake or anything like that. This box and that box back there have canned chicken. Uh, we use a lot of canned chicken. We use it um, like for sandwiches and on crackers at lunchtime. And there's, there's a lot of uses for canned chicken. We have some banana baby food. That's actually not for our baby. That's for making banana bread. If we're in the mood to make banana bread and we don't have any bananas on hand, I can still make it because I've got that that baby food. I just wait until it's until it's on sale and and buy some. On this shelf, we have like uh, this is canning salt. You cannot use iodized salt in canning. It'll change the color of what you're canning. Uh, I don't actually know if it makes it unsafe, but I know it makes it look not so great. Um, we've got barbecue sauce. There's a lot of um, canned canned fruit back there, some salt, kosher salt, um, pineapple juice, and evaporated milk that I was telling you about um, that we use a lot of. And then there's some shelf-stable milk. Um, this is from the U.S. This lasts about a year on the shelf. And it's just nice to have on hand. It tastes very similar to just regular refrigerated milk, especially if you chill it before you you uh, serve it. Uh, these expire pretty soon, so, so we've got to kind of get on it um, to eat those. We're not going to grocery stores right now because of COVID um, and because, you know, one of our children is high risk. So... You know, probably our next grocery pickup order, we just won't get any milk um, and we'll go, well, we'll still have to get milk. That's only a few gallons worth, um, but we won't get as much as we normally would. This is a lot of miscellaneous stuff. There's some more um, pumpkin from an older case. Um, this particular brand of pumpkin works really well for things like muffins or pumpkin bread, but it's it's a little, little soft for making pies, in my opinion. Um, there's olives and some more of that like um, Chef Boyardee type stuff. Uh, we've got, sorry, it's a little dark over here. We've got some tea, um, tea and almonds, whole powdered milk. Um, so we have a bunch of things from that company. I actually keep them in the freezer because they don't have a long shelf life. Well, they do. They, they last about a year, but I like to buy them in bulk and then um, keep them on hand a little longer than that. Uh, we have like cheddar cheese powder and butter powder and sour cream powder. And that's just, again, like if I need that ingredient and I don't want to spend an hour and a half driving to the closest store, I can just get that out and, and have it ready to go. This is our regular day-to-day -day salt. This is a 10-pound bucket of salt. And we're most of the way through it. I think it's about about a third left or so. Um, and we'll, we'll get through this in the next several months. Um, there's just cocoa powder, again, powdered buttermilk, you know, it, I don't have to run to the store to get buttermilk if I, if I want to use it. Um, we have some, some baking powder. Oh, another can of pie filling, of course. Uh, raw honey. Um, this is a nice, this is crystallized. Um, so this is a nice honey to like spread on toast. I'm going to try... Sorry, I've got some things behind me. I'm going to back up here and show you the other half of the top shelf. So these are all the diapers. I buy diapers whenever I can get a good price on them and I stay a size ahead so that we're not unable to use them. And that's just a really economical way of getting diapers. We used cloth diapers for about 10 years, but at this point with so much laundry for all of us, we do anywhere between 20 and 30 loads of laundry a week. There just, there just isn't enough time to wash the cloth diapers. And uh, once our cloth diapers wore out, I got rid of them or turned them into cleaning rags and we, we moved on to the disposable diapers. I do have a few left um, as well as a couple diaper covers that we can use in case we, uh, we happen to run out of disposable diapers and we can have those as like an emergency backup. Uh, so you see like all of these, um, this is just all kinds of miscellaneous canned stuff like coconut milk and things. 
This is steel cut oats and that's some cornmeal right there. A bunch of these pretzel things. Uh, I found a few like back behind some stuff while I was cleaning in here. Uh, more K-cups. These are more K-cups too. This is powdered milk. Um, powdered milk is nice compared to like the shelf stable cartons simply because it's shelf stable for a really long time compared to the shell you know the the UHT milk the ultra high temperature um cartons of milk those tetra pack cartons and it's also even longer um shelf life than evaporated milk but the problem with it is that it doesn't taste very good to be frank you know it's it's not that great the the most common way i use powdered milk other than in uh certain bread recipes that call for it is to mix it with peanut butter and make um, make like a peanut butter Play-Doh, a little bit of honey, some powdered milk, and the peanut butter. You mix it to the right, you know, until the consistency seems right to you and the kids can play with it and eat it for a snack. So coming into this shelf, um, I'll just zoom in a bit so the light stays good. Way back in this corner, we have um, some more powdered Gatorade. These are a whole bunch of um, like four ounce fruit cups that we use for school lunches. We have a bunch of foil um, muffin papers and pretzel salt. It's just like a coarse pretzel salt. It's the same as regular salt, it just has some more air in it so that it's crunchy without breaking your teeth because of course salt is a rock. Um, bacon that I found in the back, the kids will probably sneak that and end up eating it. Uh, this is a whole case of tuna. That's 48 cans of tuna. Uh, when we get tuna, a lot of people ask, like, why don't you buy tuna in those really big containers? And what I found is that if I'm buying it by the case in those common little hockey puck size containers, it's actually less expensive to buy it that way than it is to buy it in the restaurant cans, unless I'm buying the really, really enormous cans that we just can't go through before it goes bad. Um, so we have all that. This is some more... Um, chicken this is like the um the canned chicken compared to like those keystone chicken chunks this is much more finely textured and it says premium chunk chicken it's not really chunky it's just not um and that's okay like if you're making a chicken salad out of it or putting it on a green salad it's perfectly fine um and we eat this uh, quite a bit because it's just it's convenient and it's reasonably healthy um, of course not as healthy as, as um, you know fresh chicken but but sometimes you just need something easy we don't have any restaurants out here so there is um, there's no options to just go through a drive-thru or anything um, I found these so these were over in our other um, food storage area. We've got um, broccoli and alfalfa seeds. These are just to make sprouts. I, I meant to do this here in the winter, like on the windowsill above the sink, and I I haven't done it yet. I'm going to try and get down here so it's looking a little better. There we go. Um, so there's bird's custard powder. Bird's custard um, is for Nanaimo bars. It's a like a dessert here in Canada. Um, we have a whole lot of, sorry for all the movement, um, we have a whole lot of jam. I get jam in the United States because the kids prefer the, the kinds that are there. They're kind of a thicker um, thicker product than the ones that, that are in Canada. The Canadian jams are are a little, uh, little more runny. This is a mostly empty bucket of coconut oil. And then back there, put this away. That's vegetable oil. And I don't even know what kind of oil this is canola oil. Uh, this is a three liter jug of grapeseed oil. Lots of miscellaneous cans in here um, and salad dressing. I'll try and get the light. I'm so sorry about that. Um, collagen peptides, those go in um, in smoothies for, for extra protein. And then some dried fruit. We have some dried blueberries and some raisins. And I believe we've gone through everything. So I will back up and do one more quick overview of our big pantry. And I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye.